to my next video tutorial. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're safe and well watching this video. Uh, so this one, as the title said, is the second part in Basics of Airbrushing. So in this video, I want to go into a bit of building on what we've learnt from the first part uh, and go into some other important things to remember um, when airbrushing and going into more of a practical side and looking at different techniques that you can use for spraying. Uh, and as I said, it will build on what we've already learnt, um, those things to remember when approaching airbrushing and actually getting some paint on the model. Uh, and then we'll go into a bit of a cleaning procedure. I'll show you uh, how I go about cleaning my airbrush and keeping it nice and neat and tidy. All right, so my subject of painting tonight will be this boring dozer blade. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, not the most amazing thing to paint, but uh, I just thought it'd be a good object to show some of the spraying techniques on that I'm, uh, I'm gonna show you tonight. So, what I want to start with though is just going into, as I mentioned, those four important things to remember. So the first one being that um, it's very important to have the right paint consistency and pressure. Um, I drummed on a lot about this in the previous video, so uh, I'm not going to go into that in this video um, as much as I did in the other one. Um, but yeah, if you haven't checked out the first part, I would definitely very much recommend checking that out. Um, it's going to help a lot with uh, understanding what I'm talking about in this video. Um, it's, yeah, it's a good one to watch. So, number two, uh, I like to refer to this as keep it moving. So, um, so what I mean by this is um, that when you're applying paint uh, onto the surface, you don't want to just hold the airbrush in the same spot. Uh, because then you're going to get a large buildup of paint in that one area and you're going to start seeing some um, the, the paint kind of starting to spread out and in some instances you might see that spidering effect that I mentioned in the, the previous um, video. So um, I will demonstrate these things uh, after I've talked about them a little bit um, so it's going to make a bit more sense if I show you. Um, but going on to the third point, uh, this one's kind of similar, um, allowing each layer to dry before moving on to the next. Um, this one I feel is kind of self-explanatory. Um, when you're painting with a paintbrush, you, you know, you let each layer dry before you move on to the next one. Otherwise you risk disrupting the previous layer, um, and you just end up, you know, in a bit of a mess. Um, same things, same thing applies to airbrushing let that layer dry before you move on to the next one. Uh, and the last one, number four, um, releasing airflow last. And I'll explain, I'll demonstrate this one as well. It'll make, make a lot more sense than me trying to explain it to you. Um, so this is just kind of a bit of um, getting familiar with using your trigger and just um, making sure that as you uh, finish a brush stroke, or whatever you're doing, that you release the paint flow and then you release the airflow. So that as you're uh, putting the airbrush down, you're not leaving any paint on the tip because um, if you were to do it the other way around, if you had your airflow going uh, and you re release your airflow before you re return the needle to, the, um, to its resting spot, then you're going to risk leaving paint. Uh, the paint's still flowing through because it's leaving an opening through the nozzle and then you just have paint sitting on, on the nozzle. Um, so that last little bit of airflow at the end helps to disperse that paint sitting on the nozzle. All that might not have made a whole lot of sense to you, so when I demonstrate that to you, I hope it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so going through those four important things to remember, uh, just a little bit of a what I've got going on here. So my paint consistency and pressure relationship, keeping those in mind. What I've got in the cup is just Vallejo Model Air Sand Yellow, pre-mixed airbrush paint. So I know that I can just drop that straight in and paint consistency is gonna be okay. Uh, and then my air pressure from my airbrush, I'm uh, sorry, air compressor is set at 30 PSI, which is the opt optimal um, pressure. So moving on to the second point, 
uh, and this is the first one I want to demonstrate to you is this keep it moving uh, approach. So um, it doesn't take much to, to notice where uh, this um, is an important thing to remember. So if I start to apply some paint onto this surface here, doesn't take long to notice what the problem is. <laughs> so it started out looking okay as it was spraying out. It had a nice smoothness to it. But then as the paint started to build up, uh, it just started to kind of create this crater sort of look. And that's too much paint sitting on the surface. Um, and it just, yeah, ends up dispersing with the airflow. So if I were to be painting that you know, a little area on a model. What I wanted to be doing is keeping the airbrush moving as I'm spraying. So, as I spray, I use, a lot of the time I use this circular motion. To apply it. And as you can see, because I'm keeping it moving, I'm not holding it in the same spot for too long, I'm getting a much smoother look to it. And I'm not having that problem where I'm getting a build up of paint and then disrupting it by, uh, you know, creating that crater. Um, there's too much paint sitting on the surface. So, yeah, keeping the airbrush moving. Um, using um, different kinds of motions, depending on what kind of surface you're painting. Um, the circular motions are, are good for probably smaller surfaces. Uh, larger surfaces you want to maybe go with more of a linear movement so that you're going across like that. Um, yeah, just depends on what surface you're doing. But the most important thing isn't to, is to remember, you know, don't keep going over. Even if you are keeping it moving, don't keep going over the same spot. And this kind of relates to the third point, I guess, because in a sense you are creating a layer and then you're kind of going over it before it does dry. Um, but yeah, so don't hold the airbrush in the same spot. Even if you're painting uh, a small uh, part on a model or, you know, a small model, just keep it moving. Do a, do a layer and then stop. And then obviously let that layer dry and then move on to the next. There's no point in rushing it. Um, I know that airbrushes, they do already <laughs> speed speed your painting up a whole lot, so um, there's really no point in, in rushing this. Um, some people might think, you know, it's just a, an easy way to get a base coat on a model, uh, which is true, uh, but you wanna make sure you get it right because it's the base coat, it's the foundation of your whole paint scheme, so you wanna make sure you get it right. And that's a nice smooth layer on the bottom just helps you uh, further on. So, uh, going more into the third point that I had mentioned was um, allowing each layer to dry. So, I mean, I can demonstrate with this layer here. You can tell because of the sheen of it that it hasn't fully dried because it's, it's quite a lot of paint that I'd unloaded onto the surface there. So if I go over that, it starts creating that ruffled kind of rippling effect which you really don't want to do. And as I mentioned, you know, this is one thing that you'd see when you're rushing through doing an airbrush paint job, um, trying to get it layering up uh, too quickly and just loading too much paint onto the surface. Um, just like, you know, painting with a paintbrush, it's better to go with thin coats uh, and letting each layer dry in between rather than going with thick coats and risking losing your detail and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that one. All right, so this last one, the fourth important thing to remember, uh, this one pro probably needed the most explaining because it probably didn't make a whole lot of sense. So just going into uh, looking at the mechanics of the, the trigger again, just as a reminder. So, uh, I and mean, if you've got your airbrush in front of you, you can have a look at yours too. So pushing down on the trigger, this is paint uh, airflow and then pulling back on the trigger controls the paint flow so 
keeping an eye on watching the trigger as I'm doing this. So getting the airflow happening. And then I'm pulling the trigger back and my paint flow comes out. And I release. So I don't know if you noticed it there, but as I you know, pull the paint flow back and I release the paint flow, my air, air is still going. And then I release my air. And so as I mentioned, what this does is uh, because you've had the opening in the nozzle with the needle coming back, it's, the paint's obviously, you know, constantly flowing through there. Uh, if you leave that open, you know, the paint's just going to keep coming out. Um, so releasing the airflow first. So if I demonstrate that, so I'm spraying, I release my airflow the nozzle's still open. So there's still paint flowing through because I've got it held back. And then I might, you know, just casually just put that back and I put my airbrush away. Um, and for some reason I haven't cleaned it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but if I go to try and use that again, uh, and if I leave it long enough, that paint's gonna dry on the tip and you're gonna have enough of the camera's gonna focus on that. You can see there is some paint on, left on the tip there. So when I start to spray, this is going to work for me. I can just demonstrate it by pulling back the paint flow a little bit, and that's that's going to leave a little bit of paint on the on the nozzle. And then as soon as I go to spray, I I get that splattering effect. And yeah, like I mentioned, if you're leaving paint on the nozzle like that, it's just going to clog up. If you leave it there for long enough, uh, the paint's going to dry. And um, yeah, you don't want that tip dry happening because it's yeah going to be a big hurdle for you painting. Um, some, it might require you to dismantle your airbrush and pull it apart and clean it, give it a deep clean um, if you've got too much of a build up. So yeah, so just going through it again. Uh, as I start, airflow first. Paint flow. Then when I'm done, I put the paint flow back to where it is and release, release the airflow. So I'm putting the needle back in its resting spot and then I'm releasing the airflow. That last little bit of airflow ensures that there's no paint sitting on the nozzle. Um, and I'll show you again paint flow, I'm releasing air first, I've still got the trigger back and there's paint flowing through, small amount but still, and then I drop it back, as soon as I go to spray again, there's that little bit of a spattering happening and you really want to try to avoid that. However, later on in this video as I'm painting this dozer blade, I want to show you how you can use that to your advantage, as long as you're doing it right, making sure you're not leaving any paint on the, on the tip. Uh, you can actually use it to your advantage. So, but more on that later. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start um, showing you some of those things on here. Um, keeping in mind all of those important things. Um, and I'll just start showing you some of the spraying techniques. So the obvious one to start with will be my base coat. So this is already primed in black and I'm gonna be using the Vallejo Model Air Sand Yellow to apply a base coat to this. So, applying a base coat requires you to hold the airbrush back a bit further. And as I mentioned, my paint consistency is straight out of the bottle and the PSI is set at 30, which is the optimal for, for that kind of paint consistency. So I'm just applying very thin layers to start with. And as you can see, as I was doing that, I'm keeping it moving. Important thing to remember. I'm creating thin layers. I'm building it up. I'm not holding the airbrush in the same spot. I'm just allowing the paint to flood the surface because I know that's going to give me a bit of an ugly look. And of course, as I mentioned, um, 
you know, the movements depend on the surface that you're working with. So some of those circular movements as well. You can use some of those. Just playing around with whatever works on the surface. looking pretty good for the base coat so yeah most important thing to remember especially with the base coating is to keep it moving okay so my base coat is dry so my next step will start will be to start applying some initial highlights just to get some variation in the tone uh, on this surface uh, get a bit of a gradient happening in some spots so I'm going to target this middle section first uh, and what I've got loaded up is Vallejo Game Air Bone White. Because um, this is a lighter colour, um, I wasn't too happy with how it was coming out with the airbrush. So I've just thinned it down with a couple of drops of my uh, um, airbrush thinner and flow improver mix that I went into in a previous video. Uh, and just kind of getting a bit of a smoother result with that, so I'm quite happy with that. So I wanted to target this lower lower part of the uh, middle section here. So because it's a linear surface, I'm going to do some of these linear movements to get this, the paint laid out. Again, I'm doing short bursts. Target the bottom edge of that bit, just giving it some variation in the, in the surface. So, next thing that I want to do is start to apply some shading to this, uh, getting some of the detail to stand out. Uh, so I want to show you what you can do with the airbrush to do that. So what I'm going to be aiming to do is some of these fine lines in the recess. So a lot of this is um, practice, practice, practice. Um, kind of putting my skills to the test here. Um, what I've got in the cup is Valero Model Air Leather Brown. And what I've done with that is I've thinned that down quite substantially. Um, as you can see, it's very thin. Uh, and because I have thinned that down a lot, I've dropped the pressure uh, and it's sitting at 20 psi. Um, I find that was giving it a nice flow. Um, and you can see, you can get Of lines happening with it. Alright, so doing fine detail stuff like this, it's very much about controlling your paint flow. Um, so, so because you're getting quite close to the surface, again remembering to have airflow first, uh, you start just very gently pulling back on the paint flow and as you're pulling back at the same time you're moving the brush I'm only pulling that back a very small degree I'm only going to about there as I'm pulling that back so as opposed to base coating where I would be pulling it back to, to about here um, so yeah, very little paint flow, um, controlling that, uh, and simultaneously as you're getting the airflow happening, just get paint drying on the tip as I'm, as I'm talking, it's kind 
disrupting it a bit, but yeah. Um, remembering to keep it moving. <laughs> so, applied to this, um, this is going to put my skills to the test, as I said. <laughs> um, so I want to be creating a recess shade under here and then creating a bit of a shade in there as well uh, and then going around the rivets and things and getting those details to stand out as well. So I mentioned that going and I'd tidy that up with a brush, a paintbrush, um, but um, just giving it a, a rough shade in that area. It's definitely harder than it <laughs> than it um, than it seems. I'm um, just creating a nice straight line like that. And then just around the rivets, um, it's quite simple, just giving it a little bit of a and releasing a little bit of air for paint flow release. Um, you can see I made the mistake there of letting too much paint out. Most of them were good, but and that, was that one that I stuffed up, and then on the other ones. All right, so there you go. So I've gone and made those other little uh, details stand out. Um, like I said, it could have been a bit neater. Uh, but yeah, it's just a matter of playing around with your paint flow um, and, uh, and your airflow. Uh, remember, it's very important to keep a good control of your paint flow um, when you're doing detail work like this, uh, just only applying a small amount of paint flow. And uh, yeah, and you should be all right. So the next thing I wanna show you is uh, using a very thin down paint to apply a filter, which is a nice way to, uh, well, for this instance, I wanna create just a sort of a fine uh, dirt kind of effect on the, the bottom of the dozer blade. All right, so what I've done is I've thinned that down even more. So it's very thin now. Um, so what I'm doing now with this 
I've actually brought the um, air pressure back up to 30. And the reason for that is because I want to create a nice dispersion. I'm going to be holding this back from the surface. So I want a nice wide cone um, to spray out because um, I want to create uh, a nice smooth, um, not a you know concentrated sort of effect that we were going for with that uh, fine detail. So just very lightly using those circular motions. And as you can, when you you can see it applying to the surface, it's got it looks like it's wetting the surface a lot more. And that's just because of the, the extra thinner in it. And it's creating a very slight change in the color on the surface. And that's what we refer to as a filter. So doing another layer. I'm getting very, I'm using very little paint flow again. So only pulling it back very ever so slightly. And you can see it's gently building up that bit of a grimy kind of look on the bottom, which is quite nice. All right, the next little te technique that I wanted to show you was um, one that I'd mentioned earlier. Um, and it's it kind of is produced when you um, don't release the airflow uh, last, as I mentioned, was one of the important things to remember. Um, so we can actually use that to our advantage um, to create this spattering sort of effect, uh, which um, you know on on a surface like this looks like dried mud or just kind of wet mud splatter or um, whatever your wherever your imagination takes you. You could use red and say it's blood. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is pulling back on the paint flow without uh, applying any airflow. And I'm kind of, in, in a sense, kind of priming the nozzle with some paint on it. And as I apply paint airflow, you can see that spatter that's created. Um, remember that as you are applying paint onto the nozzle, and you're leaving it there, always, you know, remove with the airflow, um, you know, and give it a good clean afterwards. Uh, you might be, you know, too scared to use this technique because you're worried about ruining your airbrush or whatever, and that's fine. Um, you don't have to use it, but yeah, just if you're gonna do this, just remember to give it a good clean afterwards. So just showing it applied to the model, so priming it a few times, and then just giving it a little spray. Um, just a really easy way to get a nice um, kind of weathering effect. And you can build it up as much as you want or as little as you want. Go from different angles to kind of um, you know manipulate where you want it to go. degree of weathering you're into. Yeah, it's just a nice, easy little effect. So as I add a little bonus, um, <laughs> I am just doing a little bit of rust streaking actually. So using the, um, the similar kind of technique to what I was using before with doing the fine highlights, um, or fine shading, sorry, um, in those recesses. Um, I've got orange brown from Vallejo model color and thinned it down to a very similar consistency to what we've got, what we used for the, um, the shading there, and um, drop the PSI down to 15 this time. I want to get a bit more control with this. Um, so th and this is, yeah, it's this one requires a little bit more control uh, and a lot more practice because what I'm doing is I'm bringing it from the tail end of the, the streak up to the source, up to the river. So you're kind of, it's very much a, a practice in accuracy in getting it to work. But if you get it right, it's quite a nice little effect. Just applying it around 
some areas that still look like rust spotting. Something that you can do as well. Using the same paint. Um, you get nice fine little spots like that because you've got your air pressure set quite low. Uh, and just going into it again. Um, <laughs> I can't, can't explain it too many times, but airflow first and then very gentle on the paint flow. And you can see what my finger's doing. I'm not, I'm not holding it down. I'm very gently kind of twitching it back and forth and controlling it that way. Create a little bit of a buildup of rust under there. It looks like it's kind of pulled down. So I hope that really shows you how much you can actually get out of your airbrush. Um, you know, they're not just about, you know, an easy tool for base coating an army or something like that you can actually do some detail work with them. Um, as you can see, very good for doing weathering effects and stuff like that. So yeah, don't, um, don't hold back. Practice as much as you can with it. Play around with it. Just um, yeah, remembering those four things that I've um, pointed out. You know, I'll go through them again. So explained a lot in my first part of this um, series in, the, in part one, the um, paint consistency and pressure relationship. Remembering those, that thing, um, I would say that that's probably you know key to get it, getting everything else working right. Um, if you don't get that right, just like you know paint consistencies when you're painting with a paintbrush, very very important. Um, you know if you don't get them right, it's very hard to pull off the techniques that you want to try and pull off. Um, remember it to remembering to keep it moving. Uh, don't hold it. Don't hold it down in in one spot for too long. Um, Otherwise, you're just going to get too much paint building up and you just end up losing detail and, and not really getting a nice smooth effect that you, you want to be going for. Um, remember to allow each layer to dry. Uh, it's very similar to, to that last point. Um, you just, uh, you know, you, you paint with a paintbrush, you, you allow each layer to dry before you go on to the next one. So just apply the same principle to airbrushing. Uh, and the last one is remembering to release your airflow last. Uh, to avoid any any paint sitting on the nozzle or the end of the needle for too long and avoid those blockages uh, but remember that you can use it to your advantage for the spattering effect that I've shown off today so from now from here I'm going to show you how to clean up this bad boy uh, we've used it a bit tonight so I'm going to show you how to clean it just um, using my procedure that I like to use it's quite straightforward but yeah all right, so cleaning the airbrush. So an airbrush is an extremely useful tool uh, and it can be you know, a lot of fun to use, but there are, they're not very forgiving if you don't uh, take proper care in cleaning and maintaining them. Um, at the end of the day, it's a tool with quite delicate moving parts. So if you don't take the time to try and keep them in um, good working order, um, then you can face troubles um, using them and um, you know blockages and things like that it can be really frustrating when you're trying to get some painting done so i just wanted to go through my cleaning procedure so in the state that it's in now you know i've got some extra excess paint in there um so from here you keeping my water close by um, as i explained in my f the first video and my airbrush cleaner um and then i've got this guy here, just as my dumping cup. And then I've got my um, other little spray cup here, which is, uh, you know, doubles as a, a stand. Uh, where I would leave that overnight, you know, when I'm not using it. So first things first, I want to get rid of that excess paint. So I'd like to just dump a bit of extra, extra water in there and just kind of swirl it around a bit, try and kind of pick up some of the paint that's sitting around in the cup and then just dump it out, get rid of it. Uh, and then from there, take a bit of paper towel, 
and just get, try and get in quite deep in there and basically you're just trying to mop up as much of that as you can. So getting rid of as much of that excess paint as possible to begin with out of the top of the cup is the best way to go. It's a larger opening than the nozzle, so much easier to clean it out that way. Um, and sometimes I even like to do it again with a little bit of cleaner, and the cleaner helps to kind of break up some of the, the paint that's sitting in there as well. So this is the kind of the procedure that I would do after each time, kind of sometimes between cleaning the colors, depending on what kind of colors you're using. If you're going from using like, you know, a, a red or something like that, like a, a concentrated color, and then you want to use a white, you would want to give it a good, a decent, decent clean. Um, you know, because otherwise you're going to get a bit, a bit of um, contamination in your, your colors. So next thing I like to do, so as up to this point, we haven't pushed anything extra through the nozzle. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it's easy to clean it from the top here, but I want to try and keep as much paint away from the nozzle as I can um, while I'm trying to clean it because it's not conducive to cleaning. So again, it's about a 50-50 water and cleaner um, using this um, spray bottle thing here I'm just spraying it out I haven't turned up my pressure yet actually and as I mentioned in the first video it's quite good to turn your pressure up to about 40 that way you know that you're getting a good amount of airflow happening and it's you know working against that gunk that's built up inside the nozzle really helping to push it all out so at this point I know I've got a lot of the excess paint removed from, from this end of the airbrush. One thing that, one mistake that people make, and even when you've got, when they've got, I've seen, I've seen people do this, even when they've got paint inside the cup and they might be spraying and then they get a blockage. And one of the things that people like to do is to do a back flush. And we will do a back flush. Um, it is quite important. But what a back flush is, is basically interrupting the, the um, airflow by creating a seal with your finger or you know whatever uh, and then applying the airflow and what that does is as you open the the nozzle sorry as you open the paint flow it brings paint the airflow up through and it kind of back flushes <laughs> um, so to speak so the, the mistake that some people make is even when I've got paint in there um, and doing a back flush um, basically what it's doing is it's it's sending stuff the wrong way in a sense but it does help in relieving some of that gunk inside here but if you're using it if you're doing that while you're you know have got paint in there what starts to happen is that you get paint going up this end under here which we can't see going up and back towards the trigger um, and you know whatever you're whenever you're doing a back flush that's essentially what's happening sometimes it's um you know it's okay if it's cleaner and water and stuff like that because it's not going to harm it um but if you're getting paint flowing up back past this end of the um the cup opening um then that's going to start causing blockages and and you don't want that so remember to keep that in mind when you're um thinking about doing a back flush um the reason why i mentioned that is because I don't like to do a back flush unless I know that I've gotten rid of a lot of that paint gunk. And that's and for that very reason, because I don't want any paint going back up into the airbrush. As I mentioned, the airbrush is a tool that's got, you know, quite delicate moving parts. So, uh, so next step, again, getting a bit of cleaner and water in there. And we're, do, we're gonna do that back flush. So putting your finger on the end creating a seal and pulling back pulling back the, the, the paint flow as you're applying airflow at the same time and it creates that cool bubbly effect <laughs> and so 
what I might do is just dump that out. So that's, as I mentioned a few times, what that's doing is just pushing anything that's inside here back through and coming out this end. Um, and so sometimes what you might notice is little bits of, you can't really see, I don't think there's anything in here now, but there might be little bits of paint, you know, dried little flecks of paint coming up from from inside the nozzle and those 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 are the things that you want to be getting out of the nozzle because um, if that starts to dry up and blocking up your nozzle it's going to be a, a bit of a pain so then taking care of the nozzle and so i don't know what your airbrush looks like but this is what mine does if I, I can take those nozzles off and there's my needle coming out the end so making sure that that's nice and clean and tidy um, and you know it, if you're just doing a color change um, you might not worry about you know too much about cleaning this nozzle or even um, you know anything to do with the needle um, but the thing that can get a bit of paint build up and if it gets a lot of build up just go and dropped it haven't I um, is this bit here so cleaning that out it's not like it's not too essential usually I only pay much you know attention a, a high level of attention to it when I'm doing a deep clean but it's kind of actually one of those things that is a lot easier to clean when the paint's wet but um, just with a bit of cleaner and one of these little cotton tips it's um, not too hard to clean and it's not I mean it's not perfect but I would only pay a whole lot of attention to that um, when I'm doing a deep clean, as I said. But if gunk does start to build up in that opening there, then that will cause a blockage and um, cause you a bit of heartache when you're trying to spray. So I'm just going to put that back on. So, and then the other thing to pay attention to, and I really only do this if I'm, you know, when I'm cleaning it at the end of the day or whatever, is removing the needle. Um, again, I don't know what yours looks like, but I'm able to remove this part of the, the, the casing and release the, um, the little nut there to take the needle out. And then just with a bit of cleaner and paper towel, just giving that a bit of a clean. You can see I've got some build up from previous little paint sessions. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes yeah, it can be quite an important one to pay attention to. So while I've got the needle out as well, I can give this a bit more of a clean. So I can just put a bit more cleaner in there. I'm putting my finger on the end because there's the needle's not there it's not in its resting place so it's not creating a seal on the end of the nozzle so the, the cleaner is just going to keep running through and I'm just going to take another one of these and just just give it a bit of a clean in there cool and then also the other thing you can do whilst the nozzle, sorry, the needle isn't in there and the uh, nozzle is completely free. Um, you can get a nice clean happening by just applying your airflow. Obviously the needle's not there so I don't have to control that. No, it's not stopping the paint coming out so or the paint flow, so to speak. So you can actually see what's happening now is some of that, some of the paint build up from inside here is leaching out. Um, and we can try and get rid of some of that by back flushing. It's, it's kind of one of those things you want to avoid getting paint up here, but it's almost inevitable. It's going to happen um, just because of the nature of the way the paint sits in the airbrush and the way the airbrush works. So, I've got a bit of it out, which is good. 
those are the kinds of things that are easier to clean when you do a nice deep clean when you fully take apart the airbrush and you give it a really good clean with an, an alcohol or something like that. So, just gonna put it back together. The needle goes back in, secure it in, put the end on. There you go. Um, one of the other things that I sometimes like to do as well, just as a bit of a safeguard, is to actually loosen loosen that and pull the needle back just a little bit and then secure it again. And then that's how I'll store it overnight. And what that means is that the needle isn't sitting right on the end and this opening is staying open. And um, because if you've got any sort of little bits of gunk left on the needle and you're leaving it right in the end, then it's going to create a build up right at the end of the nozzle where the, um, the needle is touching the nozzle. And it's maybe something you want to avoid as well. Um, and then you can even, if you're putting it in its little cradle, so to speak, to sleep overnight and just maybe even just put a little bit of cleaner in there. So you know that that's just going to sit and and um, it'll slowly flow out probably because the needle's not sitting right at the end. Um, but at least you know that if there's any excess paint left in there, um, then the cleaner's going to going to work on that, and um, it'll slowly flow out at the end of the airbrush. Um, yeah, so there you have it. That's my little procedure for cleaning my airbrush and making sure that, um, you know, there's very little to no excess paint left in there. So yeah. So there you have it. Uh, basics of airbrushing part two. So I hope that's been a helpful little video in showing you some of the more practical ways of using your airbrush. Um, some of the little techniques that you can use. Um, remembering those important things when you're approaching your painting. Uh, and then just, yeah, showing you a little bit of a procedure that I like to use for cleaning my airbrush. Um, it's very important to look after it. Um, it's such an asset for your painting. So uh, it's good to take good care of it. So I'll put a link in the bottom of this video. Um, just uh, if you want to go back to watch the, the first part again. Yeah, so airbrushing like any other part of painting is very much about practice. So uh, get familiar with it. Um, I hope that these two videos have been a resource for you to to uh, keep looking over and, and um, yeah, they'll, they'll help you in, in uh, your painting endeavors. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thanks.